Okay, and we're back on number three. Kind of somber sounds there for you. These are somber times, to be sure. Uh, Yochi is in Japan. We're trying to connect with him, uh, and perhaps we have him. Are you there, Yochi? Not yet. All right. Well, I think you got that number, Todd. It's 011, then the uh, country code, 81, and then uh, there's another number, which is the city code, and then take the zero out after that, and hopefully we'll we'll get it. Uh, in the meantime, let me draw your attention to the top center of rents.com uh, in the headline section. Latest Fukushima updates, they're not good. I'm not putting up a whole lot of information because we know exactly what's happening, and quite frankly, the flow of information is sparse. Uh, thanks to Dr. Richard Wilcox, Ph.D. in Tokyo, and, of course, those others who do send an occasional story in. And the work of Dana Dernford, who uh, is in valuably in pursuit of reality up somewhere off the uh, coast of British Columbia. Where are you, Dana? Yeah, hi, Jeff. Thank you. Way up northern, back in over again, storm after storm after storm, seven weeks of them. Never seen nothing like it. Uh, the locals and the fuel really, all, yeah. Oh, that's. Uh, uh, I got some good time on the coast though, and it's naked. Uh, two species in, in the low tide zones only. Two Same species. Two, and yeah, it's shocking. Um, it's worse than down south. And I might slur a few words. I got. Another injury, and so. What happened? Not a, I, I bit a chunk of aluminum, um, so I damaged my gums and a few teeth. And you so bit a chunk of aluminum I, because you thought your your jaws were yeah. uh, vice grip pliers. <laughs> no, bad weather, and by myself, and so I had to change tanks, and I got a low stern that takes water. Uh, and so I went stirring on to it. I couldn't get uh, the change to go smoothly. And it's just one of those days. And so you stumble and trip, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, my shoulder gave out on me. And so because like, that's just the way my body is, it's all broken up anyway. And so my arm gave out, then my shoulder gave out, and that led to me not having the strength to be able to, to hang her down. And so it's getting pretty rough and that's sure what I'm going to do. I'm not going to be able to transfer the motor into the Zodiac. Uh, once I get it on, they're going to have to leave it on and tow the bloody thing around. And that's okay, I guess. But not the way I had things planned out. And like you say, you're trying to do everything by yourself and you're going to get these injuries. There's nothing you can do about it. You know? Dana, Dana, listen. Now, I, I'm yeah. telling you this as a friend. You have proven beyond any superhuman margin that you have done the impossible. It might be time for you to head back down home and yeah. wait till spring. Oh, yeah. I really think it's time. Look that way. It's not. Uh, you can only do what you can do. It's seven weeks of storm. I've never seen that. It's usually three or four days. Uh, bad weather, three or four days of good weather. And I understand. Just, they all winter is there. And seven weeks? Uh, just unbelievable storms. And now tonight and tomorrow it's going to be just complete storm force again. And so you can't get a break. And of course, I'm staying on the boat. And that's just got me, I guess it got me the whole body out of whack. And that made me, it's, yeah, I've been at this a long time. So. Can Too you? Bad. Can you, Go ahead. are you to a point now, my friend, where you can go home with your head high and know you've done your best? I know how you think about yeah. things and you don't take no for an answer, but you've proven and you've got the data, you've got plenty of data uh, to make you a documentary or two. Brilliant, brilliant data, Jeff. It's real. And so... Uh, I don't know, you know, losing the momentum is the big, is the big issue. You don't want to lose that momentum and to do the rest of the coastline. Now, I got friends who are commercial divers up here 
And so I can use that as a platform and anchor out, tie up with those guys at nighttime. And they're going to be working the same areas as I'm going to. These are people I know really well that I go with year after year. Mm-hmm. And so they got a big, huge outfit. You know, they've been out here three decades doing this coastline all year long, diving it, and they can see the difference. And so being able to take advantage of all of that is pretty, it's pretty hard to pass up on. It's a problem, but my body, I don't think, is going to allow me to do it. And so that would be the salvation, and that showed up yesterday, mm-hmm. was that I would have a big, huge platform to, to put everything onto, free mm-hmm. up all kinds of room. Mm-hmm. I just don't know, to tell you the truth. This, like I said earlier, you know, my shoulder's blown, my arm's blown, I can't use the crutch. Oh, you got to, look, I'm you're, actually, what's, God, look, sorry, Dana. Uh, your your physical condition now is putting you in real jeopardy, and we don't we don't need to have any accidents here, yeah, uh, other no, than what we've had. Uh, you've come on, uh, maybe yeah. it's time to go home. Home is a long way away. It's a good beating trying to get home too, and so maybe what I'm going to end up doing is start and head down, and I'll just dodge down slowly and pick That's up what I was thinking. And there's a bunch of little communities along the way I can pull into and wait it out and catch some pictures all the way down the coastline. That'll have to do, I guess, the only thing I can figure out. I don't think my body can stand it much longer. Just no. one more and I'm going to be in trouble. And then no, you're, you've you got yeah. you've gotten your free ride already. Uh, you're lucky. And that's not yeah, pushing. Yeah, I got lucky so many times. Yeah, no. Yeah. I keep getting lucky. I'm not sure 100% what what the brain is going to do, but at this stage, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like I can do it much. I'm okay, you got to listen to that voice. Aching at this stage. So. You need to listen to that voice. But uh, the ocean can last, see? And that's the problem, the urgency of this. You know, if I can last even another two or three weeks, and I guess that's what I call a trip back, is take two or three weeks and... Stay in so take the so take maybe. the take the the slow trip down the coast and just that's take a, take another look. Uh, maybe you'll get a look at some things you didn't see on the way up. You're way up there. You've got you've got yeah. Yeah, yep. far enough, I think. Yeah, and I think look so. the the news from nothing here. So what are you gonna do? I mean, it's my goodness. It's you know so boring. Being on the beach, folks, if you don't understand, and normally you would take like a square meter frame and you lay it on the low tide line and count all the species in it, but there is nothing in any of those frames. It's a waste of time to lug it around because there's nothing there. There's nothing, nothing there. there. There's nothing there to it. Like, that's what I mean. You would, and you would count two or three hundred species in that square meter normally. Yeah. And that's missing. All missing. And, and it's just. There's no way to carry out any kind of scientific uh, survey because there's nothing to survey. It's just there's nothing there. And that is shocking. I mean, that is truly just, it, it's gone. And so they can't deny that. And the data we got as we go down the coastline will do because, you know, you can't deny the, the amount of islands out there that are just stripped naked. These were all outside islands, Jeff. Yeah? And they had less than the inside down on Vancouver Island, which never had very much. Just a handful of species, a couple of handfuls of species. And But, yeah, no, totally naked. All the birds are missing, all the migratory, all the residential birds are missing. Uh-huh. And the only flock of birds was a flock of seagulls. I mean, my goodness, yeah. And so what are we going to do, you know... How are they going to deal with this if they don't come out and start telling the truth? If they don't come out and admit that the they don't, you know, I, I I hate to say this, but yeah, I know. they don't give a damn about accountability. They're, They're going to have gonna... to, though. Well, They're yeah. They're going to have to for themselves, for the but pensions or for the children. Or for how the do we get, yes, okay. How do we uh, get how the data? Speak? How do we get the data in their face beside yeah. the Internet? I, I mean, just, you do a I fantastic job. Well, You've been I, at it for a long time. And you're hitting all the right spots every chance you get. You're educating the people. And, I mean, it's this is a dead Pacific Ocean, and people are going to snap as they wake up. And so 
they need a narrative, the media needs a narrative to work with, and the apologists are just going to have to suck it up and take the abuse because they've done it and they lied about it for so long. I mean, right now, if, you, if they were just to close all the nuclear PR firms down, you know, these are the troublemakers. They're too frustrating everybody. You can't have a, a debate because you've got this system of trolls that are paid by the industry to come out no, they're and ugly. misrepresent it. Yeah, bananas and potato chips and walking in the sunshine. Yeah. And, but they're up in the media and everybody runs with it in the media and everybody pukes it up and regurgitates it out. And, yeah, you can't have a lucid conversation with anybody. You know, you, like, you know yourself. You can't. It's hard. It's no, hard. you it's can't. You really are smart enough to tell the difference. Yeah. Sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. No, 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 no. You're right. You said you can't have a lucid conversation with many no. people, and you're 100 percent correct. Yeah, it's, it's because they were taught, they listen to so many lies, and they're supposed to be able to trust those people, and they can't concede that these people would actually lie or misrepresent the topic. They just can't wrap their mind around that, and I get that. And but so it's up to those people to come out and be honest. And throw the nuclear industry under the bus, and the nuclear industry has to suck it up because they can't survive any longer. They can keep the charade alive maybe another few months or half a year, but I can't see them keeping it alive much longer. You can't ignore what's going to happen with a dead Pacific. 50% of the oxygen on the planet, it's the biggest sequester of carbon, and the basis of the food chain. Now everything else is dying and this and and shown signs of just being completely disassociated with its normal patterns. How much longer can they keep that up? They can't. They just kept it up for three and a half years because the die-offs were happening right away. We just didn't get on top of that right away because <clears throat> we were so trying to right. verify you. And, yeah. Well, the die-offs yeah. now are becoming so obscenely yeah. obvious, and yet, yeah. and yet, all along the West Coast... The real estate industry, the tourism industry, they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to hear about it. They'll hide it. They'll cover it up. It's all about money and greed. They don't give a okay. damn. I'm all serious. All they got to do is say Ken Buesler. That's all they got to do is say Ken Buesler. And in Canada, they say Jay Cohen. Jeez. And then they just they switch off. Yeah. So well, whatever those people say, which is nonsense, yeah, go ahead, Jeff. No, Ken Buesler, uh, I don't know the man. Uh, he's never been he on the program. Uh, he, he started out to say some credible things, and then he turned yeah. south. Uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, he is no longer doing what he could have done. It's not a surprise. They've got their own that's people there. Yeah. That's what, that's what everybody says. Well, Ken Buesler didn't say that. He said he only found so-and-so. They're actually uh, quoting him. How sad. Yeah, exactly. Everybody quotes him. And that is, they don't quote anybody else. Well, why not go quote a nuclear scientist? Why always this Ken Buesler, a, a marine chemist? Why quote those people? Same as, as Jay Cohen, marine chemist. Where are the nuclear scientists? Oh, they're both That's just, uh, they're both marine chemists. I didn't know they both were. Right. Yeah, both of them are. Well, and this guy, uh, Jay, Jay, uh, Jay Cohen, Cohen. Didn't, didn't he just recently come out of nowhere, sort of? Yes. 600,000 grant to go around to the communities in British Columbia. There you go. And have town hall meetings and show them pictures of bananas and walking in sunshine. And that's exactly what he's, what he's doing. Well, there you and go. So his, his job is to go explain radiation to the community. Yeah. And yeah. let them know that it's harmless and it's benign. And this is what he's actually going to go around and tell people. And I find it offensive. It's it horribly, offensive. horribly offensive. Horribly yeah. offensive. There was a there's a new uh, website, relatively new, in the last I guess month or two, and he is featured on there practically on every yeah. story. The the uh, time I looked at it, and I said, this is bogus BS. It's 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 wrong. Yeah. Uh, you could tell you in the first couple check sentences check it, how it was written. It was crap. Yeah, and no one bothers to fact check it, and so the whole system is living this outrageous lie and you can't have a debate about it because that means you have to fact check something and so they just let them regurgitate whatever yeah, that, it is that means work <laughs> yeah but uh, like you say they, they expose themselves the minute they try to have a debate because it's non-debatable so they just assert the same 
you know, potatoes and, and it was like potatoes is what they tell everybody. It was like walking in sunshine, it was like bananas, potassium forty. And these are once again through every video, through every history that I collected up, they all say the same bloody things and that's why I come after it so much. Mm-hmm. And th- you know, at some point somebody's gonna say out there will have to say no it's not like a banana. But you won't hear it. You can't find it. And but no. if they were to do that, they would change the whole conversation. There'd be a way forward. Is all I'm trying to say, I guess, is that if somebody out there in the mainstream media would go back at him and say, actually, no, it's not. It's not like a banana. A banana is harmless. This stuff can harm you. He would lose that ability, or he would be giving it up. Say, if they staged it and he went out and done that, then the media could actually have a dialogue. Mm-hmm and slip it in there, because I think the people wouldn't even notice the difference. Mm-hmm. But we need to do that no different than if there was a meteorite coming at this planet, and we couldn't see it, and then, but the media was talking about it, and everybody was paying attention. Correct. Yep. And they wouldn't say it was like a banana. They would say this thing is very harmful, and they get serious, and what are we going to do? And then this entire planet can put you know, thousands of institutions to work on solving some of the riddles that we yeah. need to solve, and there's yeah. a way forward. We, we, uh, that is a we, kind of we, we could get hit uh, next week with a, yes. a meteorite plenty big enough to cause a hell of a problem all over the planet. And it wouldn't. How, how often have we heard, and you folks know this, I've posted stories, Dana probably has too, uh, meteorite discovered will pass between Earth and Moon tomorrow morning. They didn't even see it. And sometimes yeah. they'll have a story, it passed yes, between the Earth and the Moon, yeah. and we didn't see it. A lot of times it's that. Apparently most of them are like that. They already passed before they've seen them. And or before they tell us. <laughs> yeah, well, before, well, they know, obviously, you're a good point. And that's the whole point is we never pay them for them to have the exclusives. We pay them all the monies, all these watchdogs we got in place yeah, in order yeah. to tell us. And instead we get the Fox or whoever version and that pacifies everybody, but that's not what we actually pay for. And so we lull ourselves into this world where we're so complacent and we're happy with uh, cable as, as a source or TV or movies even as a source of our education. But yet our institutions are full of academic studies that we paid for. Nobody even bothers reading it. No. You know, an academic writes a book, he can expect around 50 people to buy it. If that. So, I mean, yeah. That's what's the sense of writing it. But uh, this is the most valuable stuff imaginable. That's the most valuable stuff imaginable. Correct, correct. There was a book uh, written recently by a group of uh, capable people who who were not shills for the nuclear industry, at least most of them. And the book was full of good information. Uh, yeah, Rich Wilcox yeah, over in Japan told me about it. And, and they named the book right. the dumbest name for a book you could imagine. If they tried to name a book to make it uninviting or unappealing, they couldn't have done a better job. So it's always an angle they're playing, always. Now, the other thing I want to mention is that all we can do, Dana, is all we can do. And you've done that. Yeah. And I, I don't want you to feel like you're sure, failing in any you way. Do. You're not. Look at the yeah, headlines. Look at I'm that. Of course you do. Oh, my God, in the load you carry. Look at the headlines. Sea creatures sick, dying, or disappearing at alarming rates all along the Pacific coast. Do you sure, see that in the newspapers? Yeah. No. I don't get... Yeah, well, I, you don't. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking rhetorically to the okay, audience. Yeah. Yeah. Do you folks yeah. see that? Hell no. You don't see any of it. Now, here's the rest of the uh, quote. Some wonder if it's fallout from Fukushima. Now, this is the first time, this four years in March, that they're beginning to finally say, could it be the radioactivity? For up until this point, they talk about viruses, uh, talk about acidification of the ocean, all this BS, constant BS. And now they're finally forced to having to admit, could it be 
fallout from Fukushima. Yes, not only could it be, it is. And it, 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 we're losing it all. We're losing the North Pacific Ocean. It's too late to stop it. We are going to lose almost all the wildlife, the marine life, the sea life in the North Pacific Ocean. It's going to be gone. And then it will spread to the south. It's just not stoppable. There's nothing that can be done. There's nothing that TEPCO is doing. There's nothing TEPCO is going to do. Oh, they're trying to build little robots now to go into, I guess, reactor yeah. building one. Uh, it's going to go on for decades and decades. And if you think that the sea life in this ocean is going to survive this for decades, you better think again. Uh, they found plutonium floating all over the ocean in little tiny nano bits, and it takes one, one, what the hell was it? One one millionth of a gram of plutonium to kill somebody. I forget. It's some right. incredibly tiny amount. And An atom will give you cancer. A single I, atom. And you can put two million atoms on the head of a needle and you still can't see them. And so that's enough for two million cancers. If it was destroyed. On the head of a needle. On the head of a needle. You still wouldn't see the two million of them. But each one of those will give somebody or a creature, an animal, a mammal, cancer. Yeah. And yeah. there's enough coming out of Fukushima just in one reactor, not counting all the fuel pools on the roof that are missing and cut fire and the roof. Well, when the, the MOX reactor blew place. up, that was a nuclear yeah, explosion, hot, and that blew up all over the place. Every one of them. They're all hot particles. They're maniacal particles. Yeah. They're the worst thing that happened to this planet. The fact they sprayed salt water, sulfur peroxide, hydrogen... They're not even talking about uh, over 200 different nuclides that uh, are out there in the water and being dumped every day. Long ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's brutal what they got done. And they, there's, there's no one in control down there. That's the government. The government owns most shares in TEPCO anyway. Yeah. And so the government is calling all the shots. Yep. And why wouldn't they? Because how could... No company could fix or deal or plan forward with this anyway. The whole planet needs to be involved time for the entire planet to just get yeah. the day each and come yeah. together and try to deal with the future because it's bad and and uh, the effects are showing up. They're showing they are. Up they're, they're, so, they're so obvious. Hold on a minute, will you, Dana? Uh, okay. We're still trying to get Yochi, who is in Japan, and I'm a little concerned about him because he went there to scout the sites, the venues, for the uh, 2020 Olympics to see what the radiation was there. And they knew he was coming, and I, I hope he's all right. All yeah, right, we'll, okay. yeah, we'll be right back. Hang on. Okay, and we're back talking to Dana Dernford, nuclearproctologist.org. Is it ORG, Dana? Yeah. Yes, it is. That's okay, right. just want to be sure. Nuclearproctologist.org, his website, it is loaded with uh, staggering information. Let me also suggest that you do continue to watch, even though it's not in the news. You need to know, if you live along the West Coast, you're in right in harm's way. And they're not going to tell you. And I'm not telling you to pack up and move away tomorrow. But you can do things to make the inside of your home at least uh, relatively safer than the outside. We're literally in a situation now that the inside air in your home uh, is often better than the outside air. Now, I can't point to any particular area and disprove or prove any of this. All I can do is suggest that you get your own Geiger counter, set your own benchmark readings, and track it. Or watch our, we have our own little network set up. It's You can find it on the right-hand column under the Fukushima nuclear catastrophe. Uh, look for the radioactive, uh, the yellow radiation symbol, uh, Fukushima radiation on America. It's all right there. You can see active 24-hour-a-day live metering going on of the, uh, of the air. Looking for cesium-137, which is the direct result of the Fukushima Daiichi disaster. There are uh, reports now, and it always amuses me how they try to make TEPCO out to be, Dana, uh, it, somehow responsible. TEPCO racing to process 280 
thousand tons of tainted water. Well, they don't call it contaminated by radiation. It's deadly radioactive water. And 280,000 tons, they can't process anything. They've got machines that look for one or two radionuclides, and that's it. And there are well over 200 out there that uh, are not only in these water tanks, uh, but they're in the tunnels underneath the plant, the wrecked, destroyed plant. Uh, they're not going to be able to do it. It isn't going to happen. Uh, there's another one here, um, radiation killing sea creatures along the Pacific coast. Okay? Uh, let me read the headline here. Sea creatures sick, dying, disappearing. And they say, some wonder if it's fallout, as I said. But the big kicker here is we may be on the precipice of a major extinction event. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Dana's already found out that we it's happened. It's here. Yes, it is. And it ain't going to itself. The ocean, normally you could plow in a coastline a couple of hundred meters and come back in a few weeks and it, the creature's deeper on both sides would have filled it up. Uh huh. The, the ocean is not doing that, but the, you know the, the ocean was a super life and full of larvae and eggs, and it's still not doing it. And so that would mean it's going to be through the Pacific nation uh, countries. It's not going to be no different than it is here than it is anywhere else because the whole coastline from one end to the other end right. uh, is not confirmed, but boats, both ends are empty, so how can anything be in the middle? because it's an ocean, and so what we were trying to do was just document it and just really show it as it is, and that'll have to wait till spring. How much we can do about it, unless something different. I think you need yeah. you need to uh, go home with yeah. your head high, and yeah. uh, if you need some help getting home, uh, there are people listening who will come up and help you, I'm sure. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's something I gotta think about over the next day or two because that's what I've been thinking about. Once my shoulder blew out, that means I can't use sticks no more, and I can't move things. No, no, around. Dana, come on, it's not. Look, it's, that's what I say. I can't do nothing. No, you gotta uh, be. But you're, I'm, I'm only thinking about how. What do I do? Do I leave the operation up here, or do I move it down the coastline? Uh, if you can, take it down the coastline. If you can't, leave it yeah. there until you can get back to get it. If yeah, you can, good. if you can trundle your way down bit by bit, just take it easy. Uh, that was and a better idea, but like you say, it's <laughs> every muscle in my body is aching. Every single thing in my body hurts, and I'm still on the boat seven weeks. And so that just, if the weather had done its normal routine, you would have got out there and you've been on the beaches and you've been running around to the islands, and that that would get you, you know, kinks of your system, so I guess. So sure. To Keep you sure. active, but when you're just sat there and you can't do nothing, and nobody else can do nothing, and there's nobody on the go because the weather is bad and it's blowing hard, so there's nobody moving, no one to talk to, and you're crammed in on the little boat. Not that I mind that, not that I mind anything like that. It's just just caught up with me, so not much you can do about it. Uh, but to go back to those headlines that you were talking about, everything in the ocean. It needs each other, and when the majority of them are missing, then that spells a disaster when they're all missing, and just just some little tiny hanger arms, and you can't stop the source of the problem, then yeah, no, this is really... They'll be all gone in another year. They'll be gone. Will. Yeah. What do you, what do you think, uh, what do you think they're gonna do, Jeff, personally, yourself? They'll just there. ignore it, they'll just keep it out of the press. They won't talk. Yeah. People will just go and look at the beach and say, oh, it's just beautiful here. It's real clean, no life, nothing. They, they, people just have a tremendous proclivity, a propensity, a talent for <laughs> denial. They just deny. <laughs> they don't want to face what think, it. What do you think they're going to do, say, there was a critical mass awakening? What do you think they might do? Any concept on that top? Oh, they so might hold a, a news a conference top. once a month and lie. Uh, they yeah. don't even hold news conferences. They, they, they've got the whole thing in their pocket. Look at the Japanese people following along in lockstep. They're dying. They're sick. Th the lies just keep coming out. Thirteen billion times more neutrons were released 
from Fukushima than admitted. 13 billion times more. Not 10 times more, not 100 times more. 13 billion times more. So the lies have been monumental. Fukushima... Yeah. Fukushima has been far worse than anyone has ever said or, or quantified, and it's not nearly over. It's not even, oh, it's just in its infancy. It's going to keep getting worse. Oh. I'm very oh. worried about, uh, Yochi because he went to Japan with his new secrets law in place, and all he was going to do was check out the nuclear, uh, the current nuclear condition of the Olympic venues that he could get to <laughs> and report. Now, do they want that? Hell it. no. So, I mean, the guy is more than, he's more than brave and, and I, I'm, I heard I from him it. yesterday, but, uh, okay. yeah. They're talking about moving it out and away from Tokyo Bay where they were originally going to put the water event. I just, it's nuts. She moved to another country and had the <laughs> of course. Uh, of course. All right. Hold on, Dana, if you can hang in there. I really appreciate you uh, helping you. out tonight. I'm worried about uh, Yochi. I hope he's all right. And uh, we'll, we'll find out. All right. We'll be back in just a minute with uh, Dana Durnford, who is way up on the British Columbia coast, all alone in the dark, trying to do the work that this government should be doing for us every damn day of the week. Every day of the year, he's doing it, and we'll be back. Okay, we're back. I'm trying to get a video to load here. They're noticing a coral is dying. And they're wondering why. Let's see, we don't want a transcript, we want video. I don't know why some of these places make it real hard to get videos to play, but... Maybe there is no video. It's supposed to be. Let's see, I might as well reload the page. Dana, when you, uh, where are you right now? Are you on the beach? No, up in Prince Rupert at the wharf. You're at the uh, wharf, okay. What do you yeah, see or what do you yeah. see around you right now? Lights? People? Yeah. No. Yeah, no, there's no people but uh there's a couple of hundred boats to tied up. I'm tied up with the dive fleet right now. There's, uh, the dive fleet is still going out? What the, what are they bringing in? They're doing uh sea urchins. Uh huh. And yeah, no they're doing sea urchins. I got some good underwater footage and like they will pick say twenty thousand pieces a day each, mm -hmm. and now you go down normally you find a football field, and there's sort of my milk giving me a hard time. And um, they're all talking about the same thing: how the ocean has definitely something strange is going on. But I mean, they're target Pacific on the bigger species, and the footage that I got from underwater myself was showing. The, they weren't on no kelp whatsoever. It was clinging to the urchins, and that's what they eat is algae. And they weren't on it. Now, normally they crawl on top of the kelp. And this is something that every time we do see the urchins, um, there's not many of them. It's hard picking. They're telling me that themselves. Uh huh. But I'm seeing I'm seeing it myself with the underwater footage. But you're not seeing anything else there. You're not seeing um, scallops. And you're not seeing the big visible marine life that is normally in the in that area, the big mm -hmm. Clintons and mm -hmm. the sea enemies and everything. There's not none of that there whatsoever. There's just a little bit of thin kelp and then the sea which is what they weren't feeding. And so that is really odd looking to see. Now they tell me they do come across some big patches of the sea urchins but they're no good. They're Meaning what does no good mean? Which means that well the reproductive organ, what they call the uni is the prized ones. They're worth around $1,400 a kilogram. Huh. And at, in Japan and in Osaka at the auction block, it's a very really uh -huh. prized delicacy. Um, and it's normally, that's the reproductive organs, just five of them, and they're very uh, robust looking. They look like uh, chunks of gold. They get that same color. And it's kind of like eating cotton candy. I used to eat about 20 uh, urchins a day. And... 
on the ocean floor itself. It's just pure energy is what it really is. But uh, the diamonds you, you'd eat them right down. You'd table. eat them right down there on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I used to eat scallop, crack the shell right there on the spot, huh. and clean it with a part of their shells and pop that, and take the regulator, you know, and stick them in there. But I used to dive uh, full face all the time, and so you would have to flood your mask. But yeah, I could eat six or seven scallops a day and at least twenty sea urchins a day myself, and I check the quality that way. And that way you don't have to come up and make sandwiches. And plus, uh-huh. you know, I was down to six hours a day every day. That's two marathons on the human body every day. And so the only way you can do that is you eat incredible amounts of food, just inconceivable amounts. Like your breakfast is three pork chops and everything else that you can fit on the plate, peppers. And it's just ridiculous amounts of food. Go ahead, Zoe. And... Is all we wanted to go out on the deck, get some water. But um, they're telling me the quality is really bad. And now I know that the buyers were buying it uh, last year right at the wharf here for almost um, double prices, which which is, um, they told me it was really unusual. They were really going mad for it, but they're not doing it this year. And they're not getting no. They're like me. They're tied up the whole bloody time. They're sitting there the whole bloody time. They can't huh. get out there and get on their spots. Same uh-huh. as me. I can't get out there. I got the same days in those days. Them guys. And that's another bonus is where I know all these people. I can I can hook up with them next time and use them as a platform and also as a fuel source because they have packers coming with fuel. And so go out and see what they're doing. Look at their product. Okay, Zoe? Yeah, sorry, Jeff. That's okay. Okay, Zoe. That's all right. You got sorry, some friends. You got some companionship there. That's fine Hey, with me. Zoe. There's an otter that hangs right down here, and she doesn't like the otter. That's about the only thing. Go inside. Go inside, Zoe. It's blowing up here right now. It's going to gust up to 90 kilometers an hour over the next couple of days. And then there's another storm right behind that, another one right behind that. Well, they're not coming down here. They're coming over across where you are and then dropping down into the middle U.S. It's that yeah, they're hammering thing. this area. Everybody's saying that they've never seen nothing like it. They've never seen a streak of weather like this. Really? Where you got storm after storm. The fuel docks are telling me that repeatedly that because there's a lot of people up here who sports fishing. They can't get out in the harbor. And they got a huge harbor here. It's, uh, now, the Skeena River is right alongside me. I was going to go up that, but it's too rough. I, went, I took a shot at it a few days back. And you can go up 300 miles up the river. Um, just because of the bad weather, I figured that'd be an option to go up and, and map out that area. You can't even get up there. It's just too rough. <laughs> It's too rough, you know. So they've never seen nothing like this. Is basically what point I'm trying to make. I haven't either, and I worked this whole coastline, dove it commercially year after year, and I've never seen weather like this. It's just, it's uh, untenable. Nobody can do nothing. Everybody's saying the same thing. It's very suspect, you know. And because I know the coastline so well, it doesn't take much for me to get out there and get on those spots. I know them Got all it. really well. Sure, yeah. And I can't get out there. Just well, all right. Let me idea. let me ask you this: If you go home and p- go back out, you feel better, get your strength back, and you can get back out in uh, April, yeah. April May. Will will that be the I- helpful? Yeah, the idea was to do this. Yeah, the idea was to do this in the winter, and then be able to do the Northwest Passage in the spring because that's the only opportunity you get to do that. Spring. I see. Right? And well, so, yeah, but still, even if you just did the coastline, the BC coastline in the winter yeah. and then back in the spring again, you're going to yeah, see no, some differences. Zoe, that's okay, Zoe. No, Hi, no, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Yeah, she, sorry. She, <laughs> she right. never does that. It's just all the, uh, the last couple of days here, she's been a little spooky. For some well, she's time. worried because you're talking to yourself now. She doesn't see anybody. Yeah. Around. <laughs> No, it's pretty rough. I don't do much time. I took a pretty good hit, man. That really messed me up. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you, you know, you, no matter who you are, if you bang your head or bang your arm or bang your knee, you really hurt yourself. It feels really stupid. D- Dana, anyway, how how cold is it? Not like that. How cold uh, is it up there? 
We're doing pretty good, plus sixes and sevens. What's that and in Fahrenheit? Celsius. I don't know. No, okay. they're not like new to the case you'll start burning again. Uh, but it's it's warm enough that you only need a couple of sweaters on and a, and a medium jacket, so that's pretty good. And so I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate for that. But we're going to have um, major rain the next couple of days. It's, you mm-hmm. get a lot of rain because the there's a lot of uh, forest around the coastline. And like you say, this coastline doesn't get that ice in the winter, and the ice doesn't scrub the coastline. Right. And so the coastline was very really rich, and the upper tidal zones, the high tide line, was very really rich of uh, marine life, and all of that is missing. And like you say, the insects were missing all summer. That's bizarre. So you know the whole story, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, our yeah, listeners really do, too, cool. thanks to you. Has uh, any of the folks up there talked about the insect issue as well i ask people when i get an opportunity and they you know they, they it's just the way people are i guess but they kind of some of them get to some of them don't get it they're not able to recall the insects at all but some some say isn't yeah, that no. weird i i still think it's denial uh i i just think yeah. that they shut off they don't want to have it to is, entertain this stuff educated uh, people too yeah. Yeah. They switch yeah. off. Yeah. You go back to the football game, and I actually hear that, right? <laughs> you switch right. To oh yeah. Or I'm sure. I don't know how do you do it? Well, the, the society at large it. is drugged, and they're drugged with uh, media, a drug with sports, a drug with and en- so-called entertainment, and that's the name of the game. And everybody talking about being able to talk about. Sports statistics. You know the biggest, uh, the big Zane, the. the uh, <laughs> Excuse me. The biggest yeah. boom time in uh, motion picture history was, I believe, in the 1930s when things were so bad. Uh, when things get real bad, people go to the movies. Now they go to football and sports, which wasn't around <laughs> back then like it is now. You can't get away from sports. So it's the same thing. Okay. People are in denial, and they, they escape into some kind of diversion that they can relate to. They put off reality. I can't blame and them. He, I don't. I don't and blame them. If you talk that, though, you might be able to. You know, that's maybe something I need to do is hook up with somebody who's really good with sports and then inject the Fukushima <laughs> into the conversation. <laughs> I think uh, I'd be hated for that one forever. That's but funny. That's not the only way to reach these people, is it? Yeah, right. hook up with. The, I'm afraid you're right. Okay. Well, All we'll right. Listen, later. you. Uh, God bless you. You take care of yourself, please. And uh, if it's time to go home, it's time to go home. Yeah. All right. I got an email from him. He's all right. Okay. Well, I got an email. He's okay. Just got it. All right. Go Yoshi. All right. We're rooting for you, buddy. Thank you, Jeff. You have a nice night, my friend. Thanks, Dana. Okay. Good night. All right. That's uh, our program tonight. Crazy stuff. They blocked Yochi's phone again, obviously. They don't want him talking. So at least they didn't do anything more violent. We will be back tomorrow night. Take care.